Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the OCIO Color Space node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we've got some media in there and we're going to hit Shift Space and search for the OCIO Color Space node. Now, I don't want this uh, node breakdown to turn into a open color tutorial or anything. So if you've never worked with OCIO or open color, I would highly suggest you go uh, do some research. And if you go to opencolorio.org, they've got all the information there. And I would probably learn what ASUS is and what OCIO color is and how to use config files and what you would use them for because there's a reason this node is different than say the color space transform node because we're not simply transforming color the primary reason for this node is so you can share this color space in the OS OCIO color format with different facilities or different artists or editors and I typically use it myself when say I'm doing a lot of CG because I'll use the same OCIO config file within Houdini and within Blender and if I'm doing uh, compositing within Silhouette that way I know what I'm seeing in those programs is the same exact color configuration throughout so what I see in Houdini once I bring it in here, if I use one of these nodes and input my configuration, I know I'm getting the exact same color of my media coming in. So let's jump into this node. So basically this node allows you to input a config file for your OCIO color. And up here you've got different source spaces, output space and looks or LUTs and your direction is forward or reverse whether you're adding it or removing it and by default what this node is using is it's using the ocio color config file from the fusion program itself within davinci resolve when you load it it automatically loads this color space that's why you're seeing all this so this is the same as if i was to browse to Program Files, Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, LUTs, and this default config OCIO. If you look in here, there's nothing. That's if you loaded more or saved more. But if I loaded that, that's the exact same thing that's loading up in here, even though it's blank. So by default, this is the OCIO config file that's being loaded. So within this file, you pretty much choose your source. Let's go ahead and pop that in. So our source is Rec 709. And whatever output space you're required or you want to work in is what you're going to change it to. So if I needed to change it to say linear, I can change it to linear, but if you notice, there's not a whole lot of choices in here. And one main choice I'm missing is my actual ACES. So I use a config file for everything, a single config file. And I got that from the uh, opencolorio.org website. You can find it and load it. So if I go to my 3D OCIO file, open color config, and right now I'm using ACES 1.2. And th there's higher versions out there, but I use 1.2 because some of the programs I use only go up to 1.2 when it comes to uh, using the actual config file. So if I double click this, now I've got that config file loaded. And within my source space, I have many, many, many more choices. So pretty much any type of footage or any type of file or anything I get, I can pick what my source space color is. So we know this is a Rec 709. 
So I'm going to go find my Rick 709. I know it's confusing with all these choices, but uh, Rick 709. And I'm going to pick the display. And for my media out, I'm going to go with Asus CG. And you notice that there's a lot of color change in there. And the reason for this is if we go to load a gamut, just so we can see what's going on. We're going from a Rec 709 and actually we chose display. So this is a color space for Rec 709. But when we change our color space, we change it to Asus CG, which is this color space. So you can see it's much larger and it's different. So even though our mids are, are, are the same, as we start changing our color, it's gonna be different between the uh, two color spaces. So keep that in mind and I'll show you an example here in a second. So, and then once we get through here and we make any changes, we're gonna add another color space to transform it back. So we'll copy that, paste it, put it down here. But we wanna go from Asus CG back to 709. So we'll go from Asus CG, just way at the top, back to or Rick 709. That was display. So you can see we went from this back to this. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, get two up there. So we can put our original in one and our media on two. So we converted it all back. And right in here is where we're gonna do all the work. But remember, because of these color spaces are so vastly different, any changes you make in here, so let's, let's go ahead and do some color changes here. If we were to, uh, say, drop this hue down, we want it to be purple. Wanted to lift our gamma a little bit and knock our brightness down. So these are the color changes we made. Now, once we go convert it back, you notice our color is different. It's not the same. And again, the reason is, is we're going from this large color space and knocking it back down to this Rec 709. So our colors aren't gonna be consistent. So what you wanna do is anytime you're working within here with a smaller color space, make sure you've got one of your uh, displays set to your final out. So any corrections you're doing in here, you can make them. And you can see, let's go ahead and bring this up to one. This is the actual color change, but once we change it, this is what's happening to it. So you can see how different it is. So, and another thing to keep in mind, anytime you're working with uh, say Asus or open color or anything, you also have options within your your uh, project settings. If you go to color management, see I'm working off DaVinci Wire RGB, but anytime I'm working strictly with Asus, I'll actually change my color science to Asus 1.2 and change my transforms to whatever I need to. And again, I don't want to turn this into a color science video. So I highly suggest you uh, go do some research and watch some videos on uh, color science, ACES color science, and uh, the open color format. And that is your OCIO color space node. See you in tomorrow's note.